evening, good afternoon, nerd generation. Hot topic. I'm Spidey4994. You might know from AK News, AK Entertainment, A Source, A Spaghetti. But anyway, with me is Mr. Nerd Generation himself. Over to the right, Mr. Pablo, Dave Tricolano. P, how we doing? We're doing well, man. We're doing well. That's good. Uh, fall season is upon us. A little sprinkle showers. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a good friend with us. And I'm glad to see this man first time in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, now they get to see us. No more audio. <laughs> we, 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 we threw a curveball. We just messed them up. Gentlemen, what a time, what a place. Other than the political craziness of this country, but I'm bummed. We are going to talk about hot topics. I think that um, the genre, despite all of the problems, is alive and well. How do you feel about that, Pete? I think the genre is alive and well. People were a little nervous that maybe movies and entertainment, of course, financially, it did take a tank. But animation is thriving. Netflix is thriving. Content is thriving. Some shows are getting re up before the next season even started. So, big picture, Pablo, how do you think the industry is doing? I think the industry is uh, doing well with regards to content, bringing content to, towards the people. I think what studios are trying to figure out is how to monetize it as much as they possibly can especially with movies uh especially with movies with series on on tv on on streaming services that's fine because people if, if you're giving the people uh good content people are going to subscribe to your to your platform so that they can watch it obviously right but movies is the bigger issue because uh, um, you know you make movies so that you can make money for the most part and uh, got to and give that, the people and, and, and that's, that's what's and that's, that's what's, what's uh, uh Got That's what they're trying to figure out. Um, you know, and, and I always like, ladies and gentlemen, I always like throwing these guys off because we, we, you know, we cheat. We have show notes. Tracy goes, let me hit him with a quick one. Mr. Schultz, same question. How is the industry doing right now, in your opinion? I think the industry is in a great position right now. Uh, it ties to some of our prior discussions. We're starting to see new avenues, new characters. They're pushing the boundaries in terms of what we're getting on the streaming services. Uh, we're starting to see more representation in the castings. All that stuff I think is great. I think to, to Pablo's point, we are definitely seeing the commitment by the studios to hold back the movies for theaters. And so that to me is the real question. And I know we'll get into it more, but just will anyone blink? Will anyone take one of their properties and say, I need some money now. I need to get this to the fans and the audience somehow, some way. And do we do we get that move into another medium um, by one of the friends? So far, Marvel's clearly saying, look, we're just happy to push everything back. We're just happy to keep delaying that calendar. And we'll see how long they're willing to do that. But in some ways, I think that's only gonna make the industry, at least at the outset, in a better place because the anticipation for when we get that first film on the big screen and we all feel comfortable oh. enough to go back to the theater, it's going to be incredible box office, I think. I think the uh, contracts have a major play into that. You know, uh, uh, Hot Toys said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you want to what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I paid you so that you can do. Yeah. Hot Toys, everybody's tied into this. And I respect the fact Black Widow could have been released three months ago, but they are holding on. And why? The last episode of the Nerd Generation, we found out that Tenet does well in Europe, but over here in the US, it didn't even make, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a reflection on how dire the domestic box office needs for participation, public participation? I mean, because if Europe is doing so well, you're like, well, what's going on in America? Well, I guess because maybe America's worse with what's going on in the real world than Europe is right now. Yeah. China opened up. I mean, look at Milan. Like I said before in the last podcast, that's a shame 
that we got robbed of that movie in IMAX. Oh man, we could never get that back. Maybe they'll re-release it, you, you know, down the road once we can um, fill movie theaters. But Mulan, just to see that, oh man, I think we got robbed. But there's nothing we can do about that. We'll move on. Gentlemen, let's talk about Ryan Reynolds and the Deadpool character joining the MCU. Two months ago, I put up a post. Ryan Reynolds wants everything. He wants to walk in everybody's movie and flip a hat, throw a baseball, throw a cat. I didn't like that. I thought that once you do that, and I've talked to a couple of writers, once you do that, you rob a movie of its authenticity. The, the audience will now be completely lost. If Ryan Reynolds is in a Star Trek movie and he walks across the stage, Ryan, what do you think about something like that? That's ridiculous. That's crazy. You can't do that, but that's what Mr. Reynolds wants to do. So I, for one, didn't want him joining the MCU and bringing his sense of humor, style, everyone has a style, to the MCU. I think, I think personally, the genre is fragile enough that if you make fun of the genre as it is, the genre will collapse. I think it will. You start turning this into a joke, it's well, yeah, I, I agree with that, but I think this whole ordeal of bringing in Ryan Reynolds and possibly giving him the biggest contract that Marvel's ever given out since Robert Downey Jr., who knows what incentives are in that contract, possibly, it's for him to play ball, right? It's for him to listen to Marvel's ideas and not necessarily uh, do whatever Ryan Reynolds wants to do with Deadpool. Him showing up in in, in, in in films that probably don't connect to him uh, would throw us off. I don't know if it loses his authenticity because the stories will be there. The, you know, it'll just throw us off and it'll be because because listen, funny is funny and funny is not funny all the time, you know. And so if Deadpool, if he in, tries to do something like that, which I think Marvel is not going to allow, allow him to do these sort of things um i think it's going to be kept under control i think ryan's going to play ball money talks man money talks at the end of the day and if uh and ryan reynolds is you know he's about his money because he's making big moves elsewhere outside of movies so i think he's doing the right thing and, and, and the right thing and marvel's gonna do you know what, what marvel does and is bring those stories and those those characters to life I think that's that last point is the key point for me. And Ryan Reynolds is as in demand as any actor right now. I think he, you know, esti Forbes estimated he earned over seventy million dollars last year alone from his from his projects. The Netflix work he's been doing recently, supposedly he's getting paid twenty million a pop for those appearances. So I do think part of it is with COVID having affected the production schedule, Marvel may be wanting to just make sure they've got his time, they've got his schedule, and they probably have to pay a premium for that. I guess I would just be shocked if Marvel has maintained the kind of control it has for the last you know, decade plus, and then all of a sudden just did a 180 and kind of gave him free reign the way, you know, Tracy, the way you're kind of worried about. My only concern is to, to, to Tracy's original point. I believe I read it said, the contract involves him appearing in more projects for Marvel than any other character has. And I guess my natural question is, is that character, does that character lend itself to legitimate appearances that often throughout the universe? Okay, the, the I guess the fear I have, uh, as I told uh, Pablo, uh, we're watching the Silver Surfer movie and the Silver Surfer, Norman Raz on Zen La, and there goes Deadpool. <laughs> Walking with the what? I don't think we're gonna see that. Though. What the hell is that? Like, <laughs> Was that Deadpool? Yeah. He is popular. He has a certain sense of humor. Um, if you guys feel that they won't allow him to inject his sense of humor on a project or a storyline, okay. But personally asking you, how do you feel about that? It's Deadpool. At any given point in time you're watching this movie, this guy could just do something and pull something out of our real world, supposedly if they allow him to do that. I don't How do you feel about that, sitting down watching that movie? I don't think they're gonna allow him to do that though.
I don't think they're going to allow Deadpool to show up or pop up anywhere where he doesn't belong. Listen, Marvel has done 20, how many films? 22, 23, whatever, right? And they've, and so far they're, they're, you know, they've done well. And, 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 and and I don't think they'll jeopardize that with uh, certain antics and certain, uh, uh, certain um, jokes or content that doesn't fit into the theme of whatever films those things are, you know? So I'm not, I'm not too concerned, man. I think, Again, I believe Ryan Reynolds understands what he has to do for Marvel, and Marvel understands what Ryan, Re- Ryan Reynolds needs to provide for them. So this is an agreement, and this is, you know, this is sort of like Robert Downey Jr. sort of situation where he's he's doing his thing, and, you know, he has some sort of say, but at the end of the day, Marvel, whatever they say goes. So I'm not too concerned at all. All right. Competition breeds excellence. You're thinking both studios and Sony are maybe dogpiling the calendar for after COVID-19 is over? You think it's too much? You think maybe hold back? I mean, gentlemen, these are basically right now just announcements. They're not out there filming. and so. But is it too much to overwhelm the public Or are they doing this, Brian, to keep the public engaged? That we are Shazam 2, Black Adam, we cast it for Black Adam, Uh, Aquaman 2, you know, Momo wants to start filming as soon as Dune is over. Is there something wrong with that? Or do you think it's the way to keep people engaged while we're going through our real life crisis? I think it's pure, I think it's money, and I think it's as simple as that. So if we if we break it down, right, you've had major layoffs announced by Disney, you've had major yeah. layoffs announced by Warner Media. From the and you have basically movie theater chains are mostly closed still in most of the major markets. The genre that sells the most tickets and drives the biggest box office is comic book adaptation by far. It's not even close. Yeah, it's not even so close. It stands to reason that whenever the world is allowed and feels comfortable going back to theaters, they want as much of that content in front of people as fast as possible with the belief that it's the fastest way to recoup some of the losses they're suffering now. I really think it's, it is that simple. You know, I would say on the Marvel side, that's probably 80% of it. They always have an interconnectedness that probably plays into it too. But certainly if you combine the two, the, and from the theater's perspective, if you ask them, what movies do you want when theaters are open? All they want is comic book adaptation. And they're like, if there's a diminishing return to that, who cares? It's still better box office than whatever alternative film we would put instead. Paul, how do you feel about that? I think everybody's going to run to the movie theater. As soon as there's time to go, boom. But what sort of news have you been, you know, think about it. What's the news that we've been getting for the most part? Is superhero comic book movie delays, um, big budget films, James Bond, Dune, all these movies getting pushed back. You don't hear nothing about no independent films or no, no. Y- none of that. Even Martin Scorsese got, went to Netflix, you know? Yeah. So yeah. all we're getting is these big budget films that unfortunately we can't see it because of the predicament that we're in. But um, as soon as that is hopefully normalized at some point, I don't know if the movie theater industry is going to, I don't know how it's going to bounce back. Um, Cause from what I can tell, things are just getting worse, I, I think. Yeah. Um, will it be the same again? I don't know. I think a lot of the delays has to do with stalling to figure things out in terms of how we're going to get this money, whether it be through on-demand, whether through, I think, which is a, a great idea, using um, a VR to watch movies. Because now Disney Plus has this um, group watch where you can watch stuff at the same time. So I don't know what they're uh, attempting to do, but obviously they can't release these films in the United States because of what's going on, and they're delaying all of these films. And my concern is it in 2021, 2022, are we going to get months? Every month we're going to get superhero films. Are we going to get tired of it? Is it going to be too much? Because if we get two consecutive bombs, could it spell the beginning of the end? Bomb from what studio? I don't see a bomb coming from Marvel. 
Brian? Yeah, I think I think the bar rate will be higher. You, know, it, you, I think because it'll be a tighter schedule, you'll have fewer weekends to control the box office. If the product is not, you know, critically acclaimed and and the cinema scores are not, you know, A minus A, I think you'll see the box office tank a lot faster because people know. Okay, I'm probably not going to the theater. If I go back, I'm probably not going back as many times as I used to. If this isn't great or does the word of mouth's not great, I got another one coming in a couple weeks. I'm just going to wait for that. I don't have to wait three, six, nine months for the next comic book adaptation. So I do think, like, if it's not up to par, it will, you'll see a lot lower box office than you probably would have seen pre COVID. When these were just sort of all event films, and I do think we saw some average films get some pretty good box. You know, we yeah. talked about Suicide Squad and you know BBS. Yeah. Even we talk about something like Captain Marvel, and you look at the global box; those were pretty big numbers, even considering you know you look back on it you're like those weren't great films. Pablo's Aquaman. Cinematography was incredible. The story, I mean. Listen, I don't know how I made a billion dollars. It made a billion dollars. Got me. It made a bill. <laughs> It made a bill. Yeah. Right, I think maybe Aquaman wrote the wave of, or maybe it was Momoa without a turn. It was, Jay, it was Jason Momoa, man. People like Jason Momoa, that's it. Wow. And his Conan movie, he couldn't get arrested. He makes Aquaman, boom. And I think, B, I think that's because of the genre. Because he was in Justice League. And... Gentlemen, let's talk about a subject that Mr. Solano I don't know what he I don't know what his footing is with this. We are now about to enter the multiverse war. <laughs> um Kevin Feige has nowhere else to go but to expand the Marvel Cinematic Universe's multiverse. I understand that. I accept it. Also, Kevin says, I have a little kid brother now named Sony Pitches that has a number one property of mine called Spider-Man. I can't let him mess it up. So I'm going to have to pull him along with me. We worked out the numbers, the money, you get this, you get that. I take this, you take that. Good, great. Spidey's back, blah, 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 blah. Tom Holland will probably play Spider-Man more than anybody in history by the time it's all said and done. No problem, whatever, everybody's happy. Mr. Solano brought up an interesting fact, which parts of me agrees with. Is the multiverse a little bit too much for people to try to grasp, given the fact that just a year and a half ago, we always continuously had to tell them, no, Jamie Foxx is not part of the MCU because he's Sony. Sony is not part of the MCU and Fox is not part of the MCU. First of all, people had to get over that, and you gentlemen know that during the course of time that that was happening, people didn't understand. They keep saying, oh, well, Danny Fox is in MCU. No, he's not. Yeah. He's in Sony's yeah. Spider-Man universe. He ain't never gonna meet Robert Downey Jr. He ain't never gonna meet Bozeman. He ain't never gonna meet, and people didn't understand it. Oh, well, he could be with Hemsworth. No, he can't. But now, blow it all up. Brian, how you feel about it? Blow it all up, bring it back into one hole. But Mr. Solano saying it might be too much for the public and they might get turned off. I'm a little nervous about this. And here's the number one reason for me is these movies have to have stakes for them to ultimately matter and resonate. Yeah. And to me, if you see a death on screen or if you see uh, you know something you know, really dramatic happen to a character, I don't want to see either of these studios just reversing changing and say, aha, I fooled you. You know, that's a multiverse thing and we can undo that and move. Like you can do that, you know, the way they did it in Endgame and kind of gave it sort of this real weight to like, okay, we got a one shot deal to do this. Okay, you can do that now and then. If you do that over and over and over again, I think it becomes much harder. And I don't know the audience is going to look, but if they see a character die on screen, they're just going to be like, well, who cares? He's going to be back in the next movie because it's another Earth. So that's my biggest concern with using a multiverse. My second concern with the headlines we're seeing is just, are the studios spending too much time in what looks to me almost like an arms race of celebrity cameos in their multiverse versus actually building a real multiverse story? Those are my two big concerns. And I'd say like, it's, you know, is it a 
you know, zero to it was scale of one to 10. It's not a nine, but it's probably like a four right now with the amount of news and rumors we're hearing about this stuff. Yes. Mr. Solano, the floor is yours. I mean, listen. You've you've gotten uh, teases of uh, or rumors about Tom Cruise being Tony Stark, and and these are, are, are you know Tom Cruise. You know Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise, man. It's hard for me to see him play anything. It's, it's Tom Cruise, you know. Well, he would actually try to fly in the Iron Man suit on screen for real. <laughs> Yo, yeah, <laughs> he'll make it happen. He'll make it happen. Build me one. Build me one. Let's make it happen and make it look real. But. You know, if this is a one-off, it just can't get over the top. For me, I think Sony is racing to do something because they want a part of the action of what Marvel has done already. Well, the Spideyverse is big. You know that? Is big. Got to give the people. And, and many people would like to see the previous Spider-Man iterations come together because it's, it's, it's comic book lore, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I guess fans would like to see that, but outside of that, listen, if we get a, a Spider-Man multiverse, how do we get it? Don't give it to me in the next film. Don't give it, don't give it to, we're not going to see it in probably Spider-Man three, but I don't want to, I, I want, if you're going to do it, build up to it, right? Build up to that, okay. that so that, okay. so that we, so that we understand what's going on. Cause if not, then it's. I don't, it seems like a race because DC has already started it. They started it with the CW. As soon as Flash, yeah. as with Miller showed up in the Flash, um, the CW Flash, that's where it began. The first season. I didn't care. The first season. <laughs> he ran down the hallway. He came back. The girls, his wife, the guys, his father. I said, oh, that's what I said. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Let's I, I'm, I'm, I'm let's out. see let's yeah. let's see what they do, man. It's just it just seems like they're doing too much to get everyone's attention with this multi multiverse talk. It's just is there that's a difference to you guys? Is there a difference to you guys between you know you're bringing back Michael Keaton and Affleck as Batman? So the actual versions of the characters we've seen in other shows versus hey, what's the biggest name actor or actress we can get to throw on a suit for a day? Like Tom Cruise as Iron Man, Emily Blunt as Black Widow. Like, do you guys care? Are they all, is that all the same to you? Or does it, does it make more sense if it's actually Tobey Maguire, or Andrew Garfield, like people who actually were in the universe at some point? The time of the previous iteration, and we can go back 30 years, ladies and gentlemen, we can go back to 19, 1989 to present, Bring in those iterations, whether at the time you didn't own the rights, you didn't own it, but you want to bring them in and now say they're all under this umbrella. Okay. So it has to be Toby Maguire. It has to be Andrew Garfield. It has to be a, a Brian. It has to be the original tank girl. Okay. It Where has to be Adrian Barbo. <laughs> It has to be Adrian Barbo. I, I'm sounding like Snap. God bless Snap. It has to be Adrian Garbo. It's one thing. You want to do that? Be exactly what you said. That's awesome. Let me get Justin Bieber. No. No, no. I, I, I don't think they're going to go that not. crazy. Um, I think the, the most out, to me, the most outra outrageous stuff was, was Tom was Tom Cruise showing up as uh, um, um Iron Man. That that would be a little bit crazy for me, but but Pete, do you know why? He was originally supposed to be Iron Man. True. But the Paramount deal went down. But but Brian, I can see Kevin go. You know what? It really was supposed to be him. Let's multiverse it. Grab him, even though we don't have Downey anymore. Guess what? Remember this. Oh, oh, and that's a, and, and Pete, that's like we said, that's a one off. That's a one off. And no harm, no foul. Brian, I, I think we're, we're in the, I'm in the minority in, 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 in seeing Tom Cruise be Iron, be Iron Man, right? It, it, for most people, for most people, for most people there, you know, they want to see the performance. They want to see it. They want to see it, right? Yeah, you want to get the feel of it. Like, let me see you. Be Tony Stark. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. Because it's a multiverse, so you get it. Then watch Minority Report. 
That's him being Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> Just I mean, my priority part. There it is. I think I think is I I don't think is I don't think it's gonna get crazy. I hope not. Um, because it's it's so far from from Marvel's only been this right now for Sony. The multiverse multi, leading up to that is the big thing. They want this. They want to make it happen, especially with Sinister Six. They want to make all these things happen. And and at the same time, DC is working towards their thing with Batman's all the Batman showing up together and all that. We'll see how it goes. I'm just a little bit worried that it may be too much too soon for people to really grasp and understand, especially for those who who've probably never read comics and love the genre and love the superhero okay. content. Okay. But if they don't know the storylines, if they give it to us soon, like quick, they may be out after this. Who knows? Well, I think that's part of the concern is that all the rumors we're hearing actually center on two movies right now. It's Flashpoint and it's Doc Strange 2. So everything, that's where I mean, like the arms race seems to be, okay, we have this multiverse chapter one, or I don't know, I guess technically Far From Home would have been introduced you to the multiverse, but but the movie that breaks open the multiverse is Flashpoint and Doc Strange 2. And those two movies seem to be engaged in this one-upsmanship of who can I get, who can I get, who can I sign? And that's where I just get worried that in a two and a half hour film, you get bogged down with a bunch of two to three minute you know, winks, laughs, and scenes like, ha ha, Tom Cruise is wearing the suit and Emily Blunt's Black Widow. And there's, you know, it, I mean, it, maybe is, is, uh, is Adam West available? Can he, can he, can he, can he <laughs> oh, wow. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like I just, you go too far down that path and it takes away from what you're really trying to get done with the film. I, I won't be surprised if we see Hugh Jackman in, in, in the film. They're going to give him as much money. They're going to lure him in to do a cameo. They have to, to sort of I please the fans. WandaVision is the setup. WandaVision is telling the public, I mean, not for nothing, Mephisto, Mephi ladies and gentlemen, Mephi I mean, it, to a comic head, Mephisto is now in movies? It's like, I mean, I freaked out when I actually saw Odin. You, you, you gotta be a comic head. You, they actually said Odin is in a movie. Oh. Odin, him, the, uh, it's like now Mephisto, and we haven't even gotten to the Fantastic Four or the X Men yet. Marvel's interpretation, not whatever you saw. Now, do we owe them any type of cameo? Do we owe them to say that was another universe? Do you owe them a uh, Holly Berry walking on? Hell no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. Michael Fassbender and James. I'll take him. I'll take him. Yeah. Listen, and, and and I'm not talking about another universe. I'm talking about the main universe. This thing with uh, Esposito. I mean, I love I love Dio. Keep doing Mandalorian. God bless you. X Men. Let listen. We got to start this out right, just like Doctor Doom, just like everything else. This whole. And if you want to bring back Hugh Jackman, okay, but let's cast the Wolverine to go forward for the next 15 years. Just my opinion. So don't throw tomatoes, don't throw lemons. That's just my opinion. Brian, what do you think about that? Yeah, I Why agree. My, pref my strong preference would be if you're going to introduce other Earths and other universes in your multiverse, that most of that footage be of storylines and characters you intend to use for real in some capacity in okay. multiple films. I think you can get one, maybe two kind of gags of like, let's say they did a Marvel one, they had all the event, the alternate universe Avengers. So you want to get Cruz, Emily Blunt, and Hugh Jackman, they're all in the same shot. So it's like one two minute scene where you see them all lined up as a team fighting together. We all have a good laugh, it looks really cool. And you get two minutes of that and it really doesn't connect. I, I can live with that. Yeah, that's good. If you're doing four or five of those, and they go nowhere, I think that's kind of a waste, to be honest. That's like a, it's like a wrestling, that's like a cheap pop, right? It's just like you're doing a move to get the fans to cheer for a little bit, but it doesn't really have real weight to your storyline. Yeah. So I'd rather the multiverse, if they're gonna go that route, stick with things that you intend to tease and build out through multiple films. Brian, what you just said sounded like, Pablo, correct me if I'm wrong, what you just said sounds like the beginning of X-Men Days of Future Past. I get they have to go there. But when you think about it, X-Men, Days of Future Past, seeing Barry and Magnet, 
And then they just wipe them away. But I get it. It, 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 it worked with the movie. Gatman comes back to 1960, blah, blah, blah. But what you just described with those alternate, it seems like the same thing. That's why you, you're right. Don't give that too much focus. Don't. But we, have, we still have stories in the regular franchises. I want to find out what happens with Mordo. Is he really killing sorcerers all over the world? Let's not get off that regular Doctor Strange thread. Where's WandaVision go? And, and I can tell you this, after you do this with WandaVision, what the hell is season two going to be about? Them well, living in the world? Well, we're... we're, we're Are we sure all, this is season two? No, I said after Wanda and her and her showcasing or introducing a multiverse, that's season one. What do you do with WandaVision season two? If we if if we even get a season two, because uh, this season one sort of sort of leads to Doctor Strange two, and who we don't know, this is sort of the base foundation that they're going to build this next iteration of the Marvel MCU universe, right? So we just have to just wait and see. I'm not going to think too far along, and 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 speculate on that because we just don't know how this ends and and, and where it ends up after uh, Doctor Strange two. Well, the rumor is Benedict Cumberbatch is in the finale of WandaVision. And we know yeah. Scarlet Witch, like Scarlet Witch Wanda, is in both the Disney Plus series and is in Doctor Strange too. So we do know that. That link's going to be very strong. So, How do you gentlemen think about, quote, the signing, the signing of Miss Marvel, the signing, and that show, the signing of the team that's going to start producing the showrunner for Moon Knight, that's going, the showrunner and the actress playing She-Hulk. And the fact that Mark Ruffalo thinks you will not be long. I just read that. To you. I mean, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I, 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 a little bit of happiness came into my spirit. <laughs> a little bit of happiness came into my spirit. Roll the tape. The, that's the Pablo solo pod when they make that official. <laughs> oh, I can't wait till they get rid of that dude. But then I mean, again, play the tape. we said it. Now, for some reason, B, he's not saying they get rid of the Hulk. Obviously, we know they're not getting rid of Hulk. Get rid of they get rid of, I don't want to say that. You might not be there anymore. Do you think that's a backlash to the negativity to the Hulk interpretation that Ruffalo honestly had nothing to do with it. That was, you guys wanted to lunchbox Hulk. Slap him on a lunchbox. After Thor Ragnarok, he was, oh my God. But listen, as to 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 what Brian had said previously in uh, uh, in, our, in our other podcast, we, you know, we're regarding Henry Cavill being the professional he is and bringing forth the vision of whatever director is directing him to do what, right? And it is quite possibly the same scenario where Ruffalo is just doing what Marvel wants him to do because I thought he was great in, in Marvel's Avengers I thought he was great the first, one. the first one after that I don't know what the hell they well, were Age of, Ultron, he was Age of Ultron he wasn't bad either Age of Ultron he wasn't bad either Thor Ragnarok was what started the decline in his popularity in my opinion and his uh like who the hell is this hulk where he's beatable right and and and, and so because the hulk you, you're supposed to fear the hulk and there's no fear everybody's like running up to hulk, hulk getting autographs and he's telling people to listen to you know i'm sorry man i'm sorry, I'm sorry. but do you think ruffalo feels the studio is gonna Sacrifice him? Yeah. For whoever, whoever I did that was. Listen, Ruffalo is a nice guy. I'm pretty yeah. sure they haven't gotten rid of him because he's a nice guy. He's like, you don't want to get rid of him. I'm pretty sure Kevin hey, Kevin is telling him, hey, come and let's talk. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's like, damn, I can't fire this dude. He's such a nice guy. Let's see. Let's just hope. Ruffalo knows he sees the writing on the wall. Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure 
let's see what happens. They're gonna probably he's gonna show up in a uh, She Hulk. They're gonna probably go through that, but him, giving him a solo film oh, no. and involving him in other major films, I don't know if that's going to continue. Brian, how you feel about that? Those films. Yeah, <laughs> I think with regard to Hulk, and I'm actually going to put the fat Thor in this as well. Oh, I, think, oh, I think in Endgame, you had a couple of gimmicks that were fine for one movie, or like you could get away with them for one movie, but you can't make the character character's persona that for yeah. another arc. And I think Marvel knew that. So I'm actually, I, I feel like in Mighty Thor, they're gonna figure out some way to basically completely dispense with the fat Thor. Yeah. Oh, for right Thor now. Love and Thunder? Yeah, the Thor Love and Thunder. The PSC Thor. The PSC yeah, so I think, Thor. Yeah, and I, I feel similarly about the Hulk. I feel like there'll be some sort of transition where basically the Professor Hulk thing runs its course. And, you know, the Hulk you get in She-Hulk, because She-Hulk supposed to, is supposed to be able to retain, right, sort of her, her mental faculties yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. ability to speak with yeah. but but i think they're going to try to bring back i would guess they're going to try to bring back sort of the fear factor and the power especially given if it's, if it's a female version of the character they're not going to want to lead with sort of a timid version of that character so uh, yeah so i'm actually i'm actually not uh, not too not too concerned you mentioned the miss marvel thing i think it's exciting like we talked about Pablo talked, I talked about a little bit last time a total newcomer right no on-screen roles but who looks the part getting a shot you know, Middle Eastern descent, they have the, I don't know if you guys saw Bad Boys for Life, but those guys did a solid job, I thought, directing yeah. action in that film. And, you know, this is, they're they're now kind of at the control. So I think I'm excited. The upside seems quite high, I think. If they, if they, okay. Yeah. okay. I'm sure that um, Mr. Holland, I didn't, I never watched the, 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 I never watched the XD stuff on Disney. I know Kid Nova, her, and Spidey and Little White Tiger got like a little team. Or something. I don't know if they're gonna go down that route, but like I said, at the end of it, when it's all said and done, Tom Holland will probably have more friends than Spider Man that'll set a record. Oh, yeah. he's good for, he's good for that he'll probably be just Tom Holland and then everybody else. You know, I mean, well, probably except for uh, Clayton Moore, who played the Long Ranger. I just messed you guys up. But anyway, I think we should talk about Warner Brothers. We should talk about The Flash. Pablo's favorite movie. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I said it right here. Pablo's favorite movie and his favorite actor. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> but Pablo Gal Gadot should be in that movie. B is Warner Brothers trying to have a main universe now. Are they trying to take this whole Zack thing and make it a main universe. And Pablo, where the hell is Ava Dune with New God? I'm starting to get pissed off. Listen, we said it in pre in multiple podcasts ago that I think that movie doesn't get done. Don't, I, don't, don't say it. With, with the Eternals coming out, they have to do New God. Yeah, or Marvel wins again. In order for them to compete. Right, yeah. right. Marvel wins again. There's no well. I mean, until until we see it happen, I mean, you got to take you got to tab Marvel as a pretty overwhelming favorite. I mean, we're laying betting odds on this, right? I mean, dude, Eternals is what probably like a minus eight hundred favorite at this point to to win that exchange. I mean, they're pretty. You know, DC is going to be a pretty heavy underdog yeah. until they prove otherwise. So. P. Orion. Dark side. Yeah. What are you doing? Then I, I don't. I, again, I don't think that movie. I don't think that movie gets done. The one thing I, I, I would have to sort of speculate on, and I, what I've been thinking for quite some time is that Gal Gadot's involvement in the Flashpoint now. This yeah. is all leading towards that reboot. They don't want to just do it cold turkey. They're gonna build out a story, whatever, right? And try to get as much as they can from from these storylines and, and and especially the flashpoint for the purposes of just doing away with what um has previously transpired with these films and her involvement is sort of just um uh, solidifies that idea for me that they're they want to start over man they want to start over 
Gentlemen, is this JJ and James Gunn putting it all together now? Saying we got to clean this up. We cannot do this. Is this JJ and James Gunn bringing a different approach? No, let me take it back. The right approach to managing the DC universe. I mean, it's not Bruce Tim and the boys. We would listen, Brian. If they were running this, none of this would have ever happened. Yeah, I don't. I don't even think we're at a point where we can say there is a cohesive vision yet. To be honest, I mean, when you think of when we know the layoffs that we know have happened, right? They've already changed out the heads, basically, on in some of these key roles. Not all of them, but some of them have already turned over. So clearly, you've got new people that are going to have new ideas about that. My comparison for what DC is trying to do to pick up the pieces is it's basically the writers' room unedited, and we're just seeing it play out. So if you think about like normally, like when you make a film, like you go in the writers' room, you hash out ideas. 90% of those ideas are on the cutting room floor, and then a very small subset of that makes it to the screen. Yeah. I think DC is kind of just letting the writer's room happen. They're just put, throwing that all against the wall, figuring out what sticks, and mm -hmm. then that's gonna kind of like lead them to where the cohesive vision is. I, I just don't, I think that's what it looks like to me, which I don't think is all terrible. It's just kind of confusing. It just means you're gonna get a lot of product a lot of duplication, a lot of different versions of the same character. And some of it's going to work and a lot of it's not. And then, you know, years from now, hopefully you have a clearer sense of where you're going to go. Gal Gadot, I, mean, I think, look, she's kind of the surest thing they have. So, you know, if they want to make Flashpoint work. She's the most marketable person they can put in that movie to try to bolster kind of the, the, the results there. I'm looking forward to James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Obviously, we're looking forward to the Batman. I was looking forward to New Gods. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I really don't. That woman is doing everything but New Gods. I don't even nothing. Writers talk nothing. Um, how do you feel about James Gunn's Suicide Squad? already getting a spinoff with John Cena. You want to take that, Brian? We talked about it a little bit. I mean, I think... I can't believe actually how excited I actually am becoming about Suicide Squad. I had written yeah. it off. And when we saw the footage, I kind of was like, oh, maybe there's something yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and then they, they made this announcement. I kind of said this to Pablo. This is not just James Gunn throwing his name on the show. He's, this is his show. Uh, he's writing, direct, he's all over this show in terms of writing and, and directing. And so it's, it's I, I'm, I'm actually cautiously optimistic. Um, John Cena's in, in demand. And I think if James Gunn is really gonna shepherd this thing start to finish, like this might actually have more potential than I probably would have thought when they, you know, when I just saw the headline. So I'm cautiously optimistic. This is everybody want not not everybody. I keep saying everybody, but not not everybody can do this. But people want that control over this huge franchise sort of uh, deal. You know, Kevin Feige. You know, it's all him. He's in control of everything that comes out of Marvel. Kevin Feige has a hand in it. Yeah. But before even before he 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 was the boss, you know, because this is only recently that he became C uh, uh, CCO as a chief creative officer, right? Is, but James Gunn, now he's doing Suicide Squad, now he, and now he's doing um, a spinoff to that, and he's writing. This is you know when you, <sighs> he'll make it work, though, Pete. He'll he, make that show work. Brian, I really believe he'll make it work. Top rated show on HBO Max. It will. He he'll, he'll make it work. 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 This is this is this is an opportunity because not you know not, not many people can do this, right? Yeah. And 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 James Gunn is taking, you know, James Gunn could have been Bruce Tim could have been James Gunn. This could have been Bruce Tim, but James Gunn is the is the man now. And not to say that he's taken over the whole the whole uh DC sure. universe. No, not not saying that. But he's certainly taking, con not control, but he's certainly developing 
this world somewhat you know the suicide squad world this world where these these they they, they meet the suicide squad and peacemaker and who else after that so um this is going to become a thing i think with individuals who are or who are thinking big like this you know of taking over a franchise and developing more and more ip from 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 that i think control is the key word i mean i think if you think a director in a studio there's always going to be conflict in most cases because of editing the studio wants money they want the product to be a certain length the director's like i have this vision it's much grander i mean look at you know zach snyder snyder so i think you're seeing if filmmakers are going to be able to make a lot of money and be able to play in the sandbox and do it the way they want to do it, they can give them the two hour version on screen. They can give you the six hour or the eight hour version on a streaming service. Like there's a lot of upside. I get, I get why as a creative artist, you would want to spend years of your life doing it. So I, I don't think this is the last time we're going to see this type of structure in this genre. JJ Abrams is talking to Michael B. Jordan for, uh, Green Lantern. Oh. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, Aldous Hodge is Hawkman. There are other black actors in the world. That disclaimer said, he's trying to sell, he's trying to sell a project. Brian, yes or no? Aldous Hodge is Hawkman? He's trying to sell, no. J.J. Abrams is trying to sell the project of Green Lantern by talking to Michael B. Jordan. Yes or no? Sure. I think, I mean, sure. I mean, if you also, there's some undoing you have to do, right? We talked about Ryan Reynolds at the outset, you know, well, yeah. and apparently Ryan Reynolds is going to appear in, in the Snyder Cut. He's going to actually go back to the well and, and be Green Lantern for a little bit. That's what we're here. But like, I think you have to undo a little bit of that Green Lantern get yeah, to the new yeah. one. So that's so going the John Stewart route is a, I mean I see it it makes sense and you know Michael B Jordan's a hot hot actor so and he's obviously been in the genre before so it's safe territory for the studio I'm sure so Paulo just exhale ladies and gentlemen Mr yeah. Solano just took a deep exhale please tell us why Mr. is listen it's not to say that Michael B Jordan is not a, a good actor or a great actor uh, he he he's done phenomenal work. But again, like you said, there are other actors out there that can portray Jon Stewart. It doesn't have to. It's going to be, for me, it's going to be Michael B. Jordan again. It's, it's Michael B. Jordan. It's Michael B. Jordan. It, it, he's not Jon Stewart to me. You know? How different will he be from that in terms of intensity? The same way he delivered Killmonger in, in, in his performance there. How different in terms of that character will it be? With John Stewart in terms of him demanding certain things be done, because he's a military person, Killmonger was as well. Although he was, he had a different agenda, but still, how would that performance play out? Will it, will it be the same sort of? You know, he's obviously not gonna have the dreads, but I'm just saying, there are other actors out there, man. Sterling K. Brown, he's out. Of, he they killed him off. He, I think he'll be perfect for John Stewart. Not even that, that's another universe. Why can't he? That's the Black Panther. Still and Kate can go with the Warner Brothers. But Warner Brothers ain't calling you. Warner Brothers has called in Michael B. Jordan, apparently reported for three different projects, including that alternate version of Superman. You that's see that got rid of Supergirl 1970s. Why? Because Brian, I feel how you feel. You're gonna bring up a Supergirl time piece movie that will have nothing to do unless at the end of the movie Ezra Miller comes running down the street and now she's part of the timeline and, and this is what we're talking about this can so easily get crazy this can so get the, crazy the, the Michael, to the Michael B. Jordan point one of the things that's interesting is we've seen you don't need to be, have a proven A-list star in the film if the film is good Chris Hemsworth was a nobody before Thor Chris Evans was a much smaller, I mean, he had done some things, but he was a smaller time actor before he was Captain America. Jason Momoa, huge step up to become- Hugh Jackman. Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Like we've seen lots of people effectively get their big break through these roles. Yeah, there's room for the big name actor. We've actually seen it, I think, more effectively used as the supporting cast than as the lead, right? You take a, 
you, you know, I, I think one of the things that was somewhat impressive about, say, like the, the Nolan Batman movies or even Man of Steel is like the amount of acclaimed actors who were playing the other roles and played them yeah. very well. And you yeah. put those around the newcomer and all of a sudden you don't notice the newcomer being a newcomer. So yeah, I, I'm surprised that they're emphasizing that as much because we, we know we don't need it. If the movie is good, people will show up and believe in this new star as, as that character. I just think J.J. J.J. can do Green Lantern. But why is it a TV show? I think it should be a movie. Because with TV shows, the budgets, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, the budgets are completely different. You don't get to do what you can. Everybody wants to see Kilowog. Like, really, not the way TV makes. Like, all you got to do is watch The Flash and look at their Gorilla Grog. Mm-hmm. But listen, <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. I'll say I'll, I'll say this about the TV and HBO Max. There's they can do big budget TV. Obviously, with the Mandalorian, uh, Game of Thrones, they have the money to make this look okay. Okay. fantastic. And JJ Abrams, when you talk JJ Abrams, you talking big budget. Yeah. And. I think you can pull it off. I don't see a movie right now. I don't think you really need it. Uh, the the series. I'm interested in series seeing a, a series of Green Lantern. Of, what seven, ten episodes? Yeah, I'll see that. You know, instead of getting one bad film, right? And, and who knows? But um, they, I, I, it can be done, man. Because these people got money, man. HBO Max. You think they're try, not trying to get subscribers? They're gonna spend whatever they need to. To, to, to put out content that people are going to come and watch every week. So I, I don't see that uh, money being a, an issue for... If you're talking CW money, then hell no. Hell no. But we're talking HBO. I think they have the luxury, too, of with WandaVision coming later this year, you're going to be able to see where the bar is. I think we can yeah. trust Marvel. They're going to set a high bar in terms of production quality and effects. And so you'll be able to see, I mean, Anthony Mackie's told us, right? Shooting that show is like shooting a gigantic feature blockbuster movie. It's not like shooting a TV show. So then JJ, DC, Warner, they'll see where where they need to be if they want to have competitive product. And I do think like that probably for them is is helpful. Yeah, they'll make it happen. The Rock has passed 2 million followers on Instagram. 200. 200 million? I apologize. 200 million. One of the biggest things that Marvel has proven is that no actor is bigger than their product or bigger than the franchise or bigger than the company. I think The Rock has now positioned himself in social media where he feels, and throw it up against the wall, he can direct or he can produce whatever concept he wants. Unfortunately, the clash will be these characters in a comic book universe, whether it's Marvel or DC, they have 40 to 75 years of history. Will a studio allow, will a studio allow The Rock to just produce and take over a franchise and take over a character only because he's a big social media conglomerate. Brian? So we talked a little bit about The Rock last time. The Rock has had a very good relationship with Disney. I think Jungle Cruise will be the latest product of that relationship. He, the way he operates does not seem to be the way the MCU has operated or allowed its stars to operate. So, Me and Mr. Connell have emphasized that, yeah. So I don't know if they're going to be willing to just hand in the keys on a production start to finish and let him do what he wants. That goes back to our Ryan Reynolds discussion. It's yeah. Once you open that can of worms, every other big name star you want to contract is going to say, I want similar... Similar amenities and similar benefits and similar control. So I, I have a tough time seeing seeing him being able to kind of run things the way he's he's used to running things. And you know, Black Adam, we'll see. I think it's too early to tell how good that's actually going to be. I have 
I'm a little skeptical. Um, I think it'll be, I don't think it'll be terrible. I just don't know if it'll be great. That's my question. Thank you for supporting me, B. I said that too. <laughs> I told Pablo, this thing is making me nervous. Trey, did you see? Did you listen to our last to our podcast? Because we, I, I, there, there, I sent you a couple of uh, um, 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 links to iTunes. I haven't put, I haven't posted it on YouTube. I post, I'm posting the WandaVision. Oh, no, no, not sorry, not the WandaVision. The previous one that we did uh, on YouTube last week. I posted that on YouTube on Monday. This one is going up to, tomorrow. Um, take a listen to it and, and tell us what you think. But again, to Brian to what brian said regarding the rock yeah the rock has earned every right to have a say in whatever it is that he's involved in it's just not this there's a certain uh uh how would i say it there's a certain amount of uh say that you have in marvel at the end of the day the buck stops here with marvel um if it's a good idea if it's a great idea yes let's do it if it's not if we disagree and Marvel says we should go this way, there's only one way to, one way to go. And, and, and so uh, that's that's why I feel with that. Um, again, we haven't seen anything with Black Adam. I, I have right now. I'm curious to see what what, what happens. I'm, I'm curious to see what this is going to be. I'm cu- I'm not excited. I'm curious to see what this is going to be. That trailer, and I'm going to use your own word, look like the Scorpion King. And Brian, that when you say that, I thought the same thing when I saw the imagery. Sure. I saw, when you say that, I thought the same. Thing. Now, but Jeff said it right. When it looked like that game, um, tunnel run or run, um, temple run. It look, I thought <laughs> it looked, I, that's a shout out to Jeff right there. He said, it look, I thought it was temple run. <laughs> if they wanted to do a movie, that's temple run right there. But then, gentlemen, like they said before, James Gunn. J.J. Abrams. Now, you might have a problem with J.J. Abrams and he's a cookie cutter, but it's still good. It's not a bad cookie cutter, but then that's personal preferences, blah, blah, blah. Dwayne Johnson, you, what was that movie called? It with the giant white gorilla? What? Oh, what? Uh, Rampage. What? Speaking, Rampage. Of all video, speaking of all video games. I, mean, I, I didn't see that. that. I mean, I, no, I didn't know. Uh, Trey, you're hitting, on, you're hitting on a key question with The Rock for me as it pertains to comic book properties. All of these, or most of these characters, when they're not in the costume, there's this mortality, this weakness, this every man f- or every woman flaws that they're dealing yeah. with, dealing with. The Rock is a comic book character come to life as himself. He's too yeah. strong. Like when you mentioned Rampage, Rampage is very fitting for The Rock because he's so big and so strong and so powerful. He has to go fight a giant flying crocodile on screen for it to be an uh-huh. even matchup. And so, like, who does he play credibly? Who does he play among the characters that haven't been mined yet where you'd say, yeah, I believe a vulnerable Rock when he's not in the suit, and then I believe him as ultra-powerful in the suit. I, I struggle with that. It's not his fault. He, he's, he's a unique actor and a presence, but I just... I can't really see him in a lot of these roles. Listen, so, if it was, if it was me. He picked. He huh? picked Black Adam. Look at the character he picked in reference to what Brian said. He picked Black Adam, king of his own country. He's always Black Adam. There is no Clark Kent. It's right. always him. It's always attitude. It's always self-interest. He's like Namor. He's like Namor. Yeah. He, he, he the the black the black Adam character is fitting for him. He should have done it five years ago when he signed on to it. But he, there, like Brian said, there are only a few characters that he can play. I'll name two because black black Adam is already taken. The Thing and Gladiator. Those two characters would fit him perfectly. If they ever went there, which I doubt they will. But I just think the rock is too big. That trailer looked like an episode of Scorpion King Five. 
Listen, I don't, I, 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 I don't disagree with you, man. I, I, just, I don't know where this is gonna go, but I'm curious again to see what this turns out to be. Am I looking forward to it? Kind of, because I want to. You know, it's been how many years have we've black six? It's a long time, man, and it's like we still have, we still have nothing. We still have nothing. <laughs> Only the the CGI that Rock told this boy, yo, do this for me, yo, this is gonna be hot, and he, <laughs> and he, he gave it out to like, yo, I'm pretty sure the Rock gave the guy the 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 he sent him the file like, yo, check this out, this is gonna be dope, put it on on fandom. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's gonna say no to the Rock? Who's gonna say no? Who's gonna say no to the Rock? You, no, none of us. Are, none of us will. Suge Knight 2.0. I tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the arrow started and the series has ended. You still don't got a Black Adam. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't even have a picture of you dressed up like Black Adam. Nothing. Arrow started and ended, and I still don't have nothing from you. Again. Again, listen, listen the, the rock, rock does, does what he wants. wants. This, this is the way it's gone, it has, has gone, gone down. down. Nobody, Nobody can tell him, yo, who's, who's gonna, gonna tell the rock, rock um, what's, what's up? up? When, when you gonna, gonna, gonna do this? this? We, we need this done, done now. now. The rock, rock gonna, gonna look, look around and be like, like who you talking to me? Yeah, because he's got six other $20 million projects lined up. His schedule is jammed. I mean, it's his crazy. So, do you see why he's crazy what? You see why Kevin Feige didn't want none of that? Kevin Feige, I mean, whether he wants... You know what's crazy? I had mentioned that The Rock had done a video about him trying to get in touch with Marvel and all that other stuff. And, and we spoke about and we spoke about this in the last podcast. Please listen to it because so, I think you'll like it. Um, and Brian said it's about control, you know, and, and it certainly is that. And, you know, you're gonna, you, you got to... If you sign The Rock for anything, man, is don't... don't don't call him to be like, yo, what's up? Nah, it doesn't work that way with The Rock. That's bad business in my uh, professional opinion. I can't work like this. Best of luck, best of luck, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Boom. Word also dropped today that um, Benedict Cumberbatch, who was smog in the Hobbit trilogy. Benedict, Benedict's great. Benedict's great. Yeah. And you know what, Brian, I find myself watching Doctor Strange over and over again. I'm seeing more of his performance. I just think that that movie, some will say it was a little dull, but I see the elements that was being formed in Doctor Strange. And the two biggest things, the, the things that stuck out, the ancient one, Doctor Strange, and Mordo. And, and that's what you wanted to come out of that movie, right? Doctor Strange, the Ancient One, and Mordo. Doctor Strange 2 seems like a vehicle to set off the multiverse. He's being used, but he's not, his character is his character being developed. I think it's a great question. I mean, I think they're taking, they're kind of seeming like they're taking the template of Nick Fury, Tony Stark from the first run of the MCU and kind of splitting it and kind of giving it to a couple of different characters. I don't know if it's a trial run. I don't know if it's decided, but Doc Strange definitely is one of those characters, right? If he's yeah. not linking to the Wanda, WandaVision, sort of Scarlet Witch storylines, he's linking now to Spider-Man, which I think is maybe even a little more of an interesting kind of route. They're clearly setting him up to be some, you know, kind of a glue character of some kind between these franchises. So. You know, TBD. I, I mean, I'm open for it. I mean, it's a quality actor who, you know, I, I, I guess funny you say that, Trey. Like, I, I do find the movie rewatchable. Like, if it's on TV, there's parts of Doc Strange where I'll, I'll stop changing the channel because I know certain, you know, like one of the crazy fight scenes is coming up with Kaecilia. I'll watch that, you know, and before I move on to the to something else. So, you know, I think there's real potential there. But to Pablo's original point, I'll tie it back to a Spider-Man question. This is a, that that's one where there's more questions than answers forming over that one. I mean, for for a franchise that seemed like it was in really good, safe shape, between the Electro news, Doc Strange coming in, things are taking a lot of twists and turns. I, I don't really know quite what to make of where Spider-Man Three is is headed at this point. 
Doctor uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, first of all, is a fantastic actor. I've seen, I think I've seen a lot of his uh, work. And the thing that bugs me a little bit is him being a mentor to Spider-Man. And they all, I, I just think that they're forgetting what made Spider-Man Spider-Man. And what he bases his heroism on um, in terms of why he does what he does. For me, it has always been those words that Uncle Ben has said to him, which were, with great power comes great responsibility. And they've, I don't know if they've uh, moved away from that. Because if they have, it's like, what what you going to do, right? What are you going to do? It's Marvel. They do what they want, right? Um, but for me, Spider-Man, you always remember Uncle Ben because of what he said to him. And Spider-Man has always lived by those words. That's his sort of mantra, his mission statement, right? And, and him being mentored... Uh, by Doctor Strange, by I I Iron Man, B Uncle Ben is sort of forgotten, and that's what I'm sort of struggling with. You know, again, Benedict Cumberbatch, I'm pretty sure can, you know, do a great job in in, in providing that mentorship that Spider Man seems to be searching for after losing Tony Stark. Being that they didn't get, they didn't hit it off in the beginning, uh, in Endgame. Um. So I guess Spider-Man, I don't know if he's going to be, be in search of that and, and seek, seeking his counsel. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I hope those words don't come out his mouth. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I hope they don't disregard the, 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 the background of Spidey and that Uncle Ben relationship. I think it can be a powerful relationship um, in, in the next coming spider-man films if they ever go that route because i uh, it's, they still haven't mentioned it at all only we saw uh his initials on a briefcase in spider-man 2 we still don't know what that is um because they, they've never mentioned them so uh it'll be interesting to see it'll be interesting to see they've been really fixated on that theme of the father figure so ever since he was introduced in civil war and they yeah. said robert downey as that character you know, in in home in a homecoming of Far From Home, we saw you know Mysterio took on that role for part of that movie. Nick Fury kind of had that role for a little bit. You know, even Happy Hogan had that role for you know part of that. They've really right. fixated on having Tom Holland have this quasi father figure mentor in every one of the outings. So the choice is interesting, but the theme has been there all the way through. So my 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 biggest thing with Spider Man going forward, where is he at now? Of, is he still in charge of Stark Tech? Is that now gone? With the glasses? He was in charge of missiles, satellites. Is, is that gone now? Is, like, where's he at now? Um, he's swinging down a, he's swinging down Grand Central. J. Jonah Jameson says Peter Parker, Spider-Man. He's gonna need a lawyer. It's probably She-Hulk now, not Daredevil. Just should have been there, devil, but we don't know. We don't, we don't know. know. We don't know. Um, wow. That's a whole other multiverse question for me, because if yeah. you're going to rehire Jamie Foxx, but then tell us he's a different Electro. Yeah. You're going to have Andrew Garfield cameo as Spider-Man. Now I'm confused because <laughs> does it the one acknowledge the original Electro that we saw, but now I'm not supposed to believe that? I'm supposed to say this is a different Electro? Okay. I... Maybe everything will change in WandaVision and Doctor Strange. Maybe... Maybe... So where does the Eternals fit into this? Where does... Well, Black Widow, we know, Black Widow's in the past. Eternal is the Eternals are the present, and they get woken up by all the finger popping, all the finger snaps. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all that energy is being released. All the people that was dead, and da, 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 da. now they're 
Olympian gods are waking up. The North gods, the Indian gods. Okay. Pete, Brian, okay. But where are we going? Well, Dr. Strange, the multiverse is now up. Yeah, but the Infinity Stones that all Thanos had was in this universe, which means, guess what, gentlemen? There's other Thanos. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, of course. Yeah, yes. But will they go there? I don't know. There have been rumors, or, or, or there have been rumors that ha that um, they were looking to uh, do a Thanos film. Or they, they, but listen, we haven't. There, there isn't nothing released for us to lead us lead us towards that. So for me, it's like I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole because. We don't know if we're going to get that. I, you know, I'm more focused on what supposed to happen. Yeah. Like, I don't even talk about Blade because what for what? There's nothing. All we, all we got is the announcement. That's it. But right? we know Blade's coming out of Doctor Strange. We know vampires, ghosts, goblins, ghouls will come out of. Yeah, but nobody's really talking about it. Which is good. Yeah. Like, like Brian said. Overkill, overkill, overkill. Whoa. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I, there's just still too much to be, uh, that hasn't been shown or hasn't been spoken about or hasn't been shot or hasn't been s confirmed. These are all sort of rumors other than the delays of films that we know are coming, yeah. like Shang-Chi and, you know, Black Widow and all these films. These films are done. For the most part, some of these films are done, you know, um, but they, they're just not releasing them, obviously, because of what's going on. So until I see those films, I'm not going to go too far down the future. Um, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing those films when they're out in whatever form they can deliver it in. Um, if, if they decide to do release it in films, I'm going to go see it. I'm going to see. I'm going to be careful wear my mask. All that. I'm going to go see these films. In whatever way they release it. But until then, you know, Thanos, these alternate universes and all this stuff, you know, it's hard to really um, um, get into a deep conversation about them because we don't know yet, right? We don't know. So I think the, maybe I'm over reading into the schedule. But the fact that they changed where the Eternals is in the order. Yeah, that's important. I think that as a clue that it's that's a little more standalone, that they can kind of put it where they want to. So we know it's going to ultimately tie back to something else. But I guess my thought is those ties may be more evident at the end of that film or coming out of that film than you need to have seen. You know, like with Doc Strange 2, you need to have seen WandaVision before Doc Strange 2. Yes. Yeah. I don't think there's any requirement necessarily for the Eternals. I think that's going to be a little more of its own thing to start and we'll come back around to some connection later on. I mean, the fact that they moved it from sort of before Shang-Chi to after and now it's before Black Widow or, before, or before was that. I think all that just kind of tells you that movie can move around the schedule and, and you don't really need a lot of other properties around it or you don't need to have seen five other movies to understand that the 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 one thing that we do know most of the disney plus show present day eternals present day black widow the movie the movie before you see the movie in between no the movie before infinity war yes black widow goes there Captain Marvel goes. Cap Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel two. Oh, okay. I mean, Brian, you gotta start. This is how it. The Eternals present day with the Disney Plus show. Yes. Shang Chi present day with the Disney Plus show. She Hulk. Man. Doctor Strange two. Is present day and then it blows everything up and when i say present day that's even after spider-man far from home those are all present day then dr strange 2 
Close it up. Right? Timeline. Unless somebody posts somewhere, here's where we are. It's all confusing. Captain Marvel's before Iron Man. Uh, what is, Captain America is before. So Captain America, the first Avenger, is the first movie now. Yeah. Cap was before Carol. Yeah, it's a good yeah. point. We don't have any period films right now that we know about. I mean, even Ant-Man had sort of like flashback and, you know, periods of that film, right? We saw Hank, young Hank Pym and then... Yeah. So yeah, we don't, we don't have... Yeah, you're right. We don't have a film that we know is being set in a different time period uh, for the duration yeah. of the film right now. I mean, this is, this is very interesting. Gentlemen, this is... I mean, is this a fact that we can have this podcast and it's so interesting that we're looking forward to... so. We're looking so, so, so much with the Marvel Universe, but we also know that Warner Brothers and DC also have some projects. Um, haven't heard anything more than what me and Pablo said. That 40 million for Zach, that's, that was crap. <laughs> no, he needed another 70 or 100 million. If, if you, listen, just tell the people, listen, if you saw our podcast, you, you knew you knew that they were going to ask for more money. What? Really? 30, 40 million dollars? No, 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 no. They're going to ask for way more than that. Because Zach is piecing all this together because he has a chance to do whatever. He literally can do whatever he wants right now. What's also yeah. the, weak, the, the, weaker, the weaker the subscriber data before this project, the more money he can ask for. Yeah. You just sit there and say, look, this is what's going to get people to sign up. You haven't gotten the people to sign up yet? Give me another 50. Give me another. And if you're that far down the rabbit hole, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't but generally, matter. I gotta ask you, because we talked about Zack Snyder, there was a report. Ben Affleck will return to Batman if he gets no handcuffs and he can do whatever he wants. I... Pete, this is crazy. I'm not Where does he fit? Does he want to be part of the current timeline? Will he do cameo? Will he be part of? Because technically, the Flashpoint, there is no Batman, right? The way it, it was, Batman's supposed to be gone. Because isn't it Flashpoint he dies or something? Oh, Batman. in the Zack Snyder Justice League, he dies. Apparently in Zack Snyder's Justice League, I believe, yes, he is supposed to die. So we don't, uh, I mean. But was that in part one or part two? In part two. Two, it was two, right? The movie we're not seeing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sacrifices himself against whatever, whatever's going on, whatever. Yes. But Ben Affleck said, let me do whatever I want. I'll come back as Batman. Nah. That is B. That is so tempting to Warner Brothers because currently I have Momoa, Shazam, Black Adam, Wonder Woman, Flash. I have no Batman. Maybe I have a Green Lantern. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they bring back Hal or. I mean, you let Pablo. Do you let Ben Affleck back? That would kill Robert Pattinson's Batman. In I don't know. I, I listen. That would destroy. We're at an hour 21, but let me get into this book quick. This is a separate show. You can cut this show with it. Yeah. This is uh, listen, this is an hour 21. I'm not editing shit. I'm putting it up. <laughs> 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 this is going to take me forever. Uh, I'm just going to put it up. Whatever happens, happens. Um, If we originally would have had that scenario in place, I would have been all for it. But now, seeing what I've seen with Batman, uh, with Matt Reeves' Batman, I'm not really interested in anything else. Uh, I'm only interested in seeing the 25 or 30% of what they shot, and we got those amazing visuals in that first trailer. I can't wait to see what's next. You know? So, listen, I've always said Batman, um, Ben Affleck is a great director. He knows what he's doing. Um, if you give him the reign to do whatever he wants and him being Batman, I don't know. Was he the professional that Henry was and doing whatever Zach wanted? Possibly. Was Ben Affleck happy with what 
he put out? I don't think so. Perhaps that's why he's asking for that, 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 that go ahead to do whatever he wants. Then he'll give us what, you know, the Batman that we deserve. I don't know, but I'm interested in Robert Pat- Pattinson's Batman and Matt Reed's Batman. I'm not in, I, 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 I'm not too interested in seeing anything else other than that. Well, this goes back to the discussion of what is too much. So, and I, I posed this question, I think, to, to Pablo offline, but I, I'll throw it to both of you guys now, which is, so I'll make my own multiverse here. So I'm going to give you the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman movie. I'll give you Batman Forever. I'll give you Batman Begins. I'll give you BBS or so, or let's call it, let's call it Ben Affleck's Batman. The, let's call it the one he wanted to make, the one with Deathstroke that we didn't get to see. Yeah, yeah. And I'll give you Matt Reeves' Batman. And I'm going to release them all on the same day. So you've never seen them before, but you're yeah. going to get them at the same time. Do you as a fan have the capacity to love and appreciate all of those at the same time? Or is there a limit to say like, okay, now I I just can't absorb four or five Batman, some good, some average, some not so good, if they're coming at me all at the same time? Because that's what this is. If, if, if that's true, you're going to have, you know, multiple Batman franchises on screen at the same time in a way you've never had before. We're not talking about Gotham TV show where he's, He's just yeah. a specter and not a real character. We're talking about actual feature Batman at different ages, different storylines. That can can you? How much can you handle as a fan of the character? Even if both are good, is it too much? I think it's too much, and I think it's the studio just trying to make a buck. Uh, 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 sound like Pablo now, trying to make a dollar out of fifteen cent. I mean, wow! And as an artist. To take away from Reeves and Pattinson, God damn, let me get a run. Yeah. If you want to do all this stuff, I think I said it to someone about John David Washington wanting to be Reed Richards. Let me get my original Fantastic Four sure. first. And then if you want to do alternate, that's okay. Let me ask you this, Tracy. I- I want to ask you this because we spoke about this in, in one of our topics in our last podcast, and hopefully we can wrap this up after this. Um, and that was, what do, you, or what do you think? How do you feel about characters who are of a specific ethnicity being changed out with? people of color we me and 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 ryan had a a deep discussion uh, in our last podcast that's why i I really would like for you to listen to uh, to that to that show um but i I, you weren't there for that show i want to hear your perspective on uh, on on that right now are you the uh opinion that me and uh me hermano was talking about that woman is pure pandering and that woman i watched two of the episodes prior that show was not a well-produced show. That show was not The Boys. That show was, God knows, not The Umbrella Academy. You can forget it. That, that is, that show, and it wasn't even Arrow. The first two seasons of Arrow, what, for television, excellent. Excellent, excellent. Switching out characters now, you make, you make, you make that woman black, why? And if you can ask that question, that's pandering. She's not black in the books. Okay, okay. I need me riches right now. I need the Fantastic Four right now to be that core family. Let's make it work. Sony couldn't do it. Kevin, I'm Kevin Feige. I can make this work. Everybody's going to love the first superhero family. These alternate things, whether he's George Lopez or goddamn Dave Chappelle, I don't care. But I need to see Hannah Barbera's Fantastic Four. I need to see Reed Stretch's arm. Listen, I'm a classic. I'm a, I need to see this first. And if you want to do these things where Sue is Polynesian, I don't care. But I need to see the core. Like, you're going to tell me you're going to make uh, The Watcher Mexican. Okay. <laughs> so let me see the first Watcher. <laughs> 
That's where I'm coming from, Brian. That's what I was trying to come from. I gotta see. Th I gotta see this first. That's just too much story to tell for me to for you to switch him out. And you know, I thought about it for a long time. I thought about that conversation. That was a good conversation, man. And I was thinking about it. It's like I was this. I was like, damn. How would I, how can I explain this? It's like me. And this is what I came up with. Bear with me. Me and Sammy Sosa, good friends since childhood. Right. And he, you know, he went to the major. <laughs> he went to the major leagues. We haven't seen each other for a while. He retired, and then he comes through my door, knocking on my door, and he looks a little like what he looks now. It's the same Sammy Sosa, but I'm gonna be like, "What the hell happened?" I'm not. I don't know if I'm gonna get used to it right right away. You know, it's 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 just gonna be different. It's not. It's yeah, it's Sammy Sosa, but like, yo, what happened, yo? What's what's going on? Why did you do this? You know, there's always gonna be that feeling that that uh, that 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 question, like, yo, why, 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 what's going on? What happened? What happened? You know. So it's 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 not that I'm against it. I just need to see this first. There's just too much. There's just too much story to tell. I need to see the Fantastic Four first. I saw Roger Corman's original back in 1990s. I saw Tim's story. And let me tell you something. And what we're going to say here, here's another nerd generation. When everybody was taking a dump on Tim's story, he waited 10 years. Everybody doesn't know. The director that directed the first two Fantastic Four movies with Chris Evans and Jessica Alba, Young black man, first movie roles, he did exactly what the studio told him. He says everywhere he goes, he gets destroyed and ripped to pieces about the Fantastic Four movies with Michael Chiklis and the whole nine. He had nothing, nothing to do with the production. I'm a young director. First of all, you gotta ask, why'd they pick you? He has a podcast. <laughs> he did two watches of story. Why, 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 how's he doing Fantastic Four all of a sudden? He interned with Spike Lee, and the next thing you know, who was doing the Fantastic Four back then? What studio was that? Fox! Yeah, Fox. Boom! Fantastic Four. This guy's like, of course, being, being a young kid out of, out of film school, of course it's going to take it. But all the backlash, you people are blaming me. But of course, you sign your agreements. I can't take a dump on a studio. But listen, the public thinks it's me. I have nothing to do with nothing. Well, there's a whole there's a whole generation of those movies before we got to the MCU, which are kind yeah. of like the lost films, right? You had the Fantastic Four movies. You had Ben Affleck's Daredevil. You had there was that period where. Right. Studios were like, okay, we've had Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, we've had X-Men, like this can work in a serious way, but they hadn't really figured out the formula yet. So we got some weird, the Ghost Rider, we got some pretty weird stuff. And um, I feel like Fantastic okay. Four, you know, like Fantastic Four that we saw back then, that would never get greenlit oh. today. It just wouldn't because of the way they understand, Not even without the merger, they just wouldn't approach it the same. And there was one thing about that movie, just we're really off on a tangent, but I think also there weren't enough people who actually had read the comics. They'd heard of the characters. So one thing they did try to do in the movies, which I think was completely lost on people, was that family always argued. They always bickered. Yes. And I think they were going for that in the film. And nobody got that that was like a nod to the actual characters. They were like, what is this? It's a bunch of like petty arguments between, you know, people on screen. That's not that interesting. So anyway, but um, yeah, I just think it's it's from an era, it's from a time that we have thankfully moved, moved yeah. on. So, although then again, I don't know, his Fantastic Four got probably a little bit of a boost when the Josh Trank Fantastic Four came out. <laughs> <laughs> you can say I'm actually above, maybe I'm above. <laughs> Please, look, that's fine. John, John David Washington, well, I can be reading. No, whoa, no, no, no. I need to get this done right before they put me in a box. And then after that, they <laughs> want to get the Mexican watcher and put it, dude. Listen. Trey, Trey, Brian, if he would have said, oh, I, 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 I want to play Blue Marvel. Okay, let's do it. Hey, Reed Richards. I said, whoa. Chill out, man. Chill, 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 chill. <laughs> he said, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, whoa. wait a second. Whoa. <laughs> he might as well say Professor X. 
You might as well have said Tony Stark. You might as well have said Steve Rogers. You might, that's who Reed Richards is. I need to, I need the world to know who Reed Richards is to the Marvel You You people don't understand. We're talking about someone and Brian will concur. Is usually the smartest man on the planet. Now they all can do everything, but Xavier's known for this, Tony's known for that. Reed basically can do everything they all can do. He's not a, as great a biologist as Hank Penn or as Hank McCoy, but Reed can still do it. They don't understand about who Reed Reed, Reed Richards invented unstable molecules. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what that means, that means he's the reason why your costume can do whatever you do. The man's a genius. The man's a sixth level intellect. But anyway, we ran away. This has been a great show. Nerd Generation Hot Topics, boys, we had fun. You're going to get this straight, raw, and uncut. <laughs> so go to the bathroom first. Then watch this podcast. Um, <laughs> quick shout out. Crystal, congratulations for getting married. Zap TV. The indie, the indie comments guy on YouTube. You're a maniac, Art. And, but I think you already know that. And uh, Strange Sounds Radio. I spoke to Jeff today. Jeff, peace, peace, peace. And uh, Brooklyn Bridge, Freddie Mahoney in the house. Tune in later. We went um, I just want to say thank you again for all those uh, individuals who have listened to our show. Um, uh, we've been getting a lot of good feedback. Please listen, Tracy, listen to that other show that we did. Um, it, it, they, they, they tie in a lot to what we uh, discussed today. And thank again, once again, Brian, for being on the show, man. Uh, we really, really appreciate your, your perspective and knowledge on, on, on the genre. No, I appreciate it. And I'm glad Tracy's back in the saddle. And at the controls. So I really appreciate really appreciate the time as always, guys. Always fun. Never get away. Hot topic.